Alrighty, we are back for the last round of the night, round number five. Um, so we've brought uh, Eric Baldus here, and he's going to be running some humans against Robert Leslie, who is on Red Green Tron. Uh, both, both starting out with the typical turn one play, we've got a champion and an uh, egg. Forget which one, using the uh, old Black Order one. Yeah, I don't recognize, recognize that art. I want to say that's Sphere. I think Star was only printed or first printed in uh, Mirrodin. Uh, looks like we might be seeing a Thalia here. He does have it. See if we can get some natural Tron. Looks like Robert was on a mulligan to six. Ooh. Oh. Uh, did we have? Oh, we did. We had a floating red. That's yeah, right. Yeah, he floated he cracked a red. The egg. Okay. He floated a green end step with the star just to get a draw mm -hmm. on the card. All right. Good follow up though. Yeah, Mantis Rider. You have that in his hand, or you draw that off the top. Looks like he's got a meddling mage. An Aether Vial? Does he's he also, Aether Vial in his hand? Also, he's taken a few points of damage yeah, off of that Horizon Canopy, I believe. Uh, he just drew the Horizon Canopy and played it, and he just took one. The, his, his lead were, was um, the Cavern of Souls and the... Unexpected unclaimed, unclaimed, unclaimed territory. territory. There we go. Noble Hierarch is a human. Drew another Hierarch. All right, that exalted doing work. <laughs> wow, two turn clock all of a sudden. That is a bold move. And Ghost quartered his sanctum to get a forest. Interesting. I think he has a stirrings in his hand that he can't cast, and I'm not sure what else he has, but likely some green cards. Likely. I think if he stirrings. I'm not sure he's. Is it a Drew spell, a spell skite? Skite? Main deck spell skite? Looks like maybe a Sylvan Scrying move to the front of the hand. Okay. Yep. You get that other Tron land going. Uh, four mana. He'll have, or he'll have five mana. Five mana. He plays the power plant. Good time for that Batter Skull in the sequencing. Oh, yeah. If only the red green Tron player had that main deck. That'd be a, a fine play. That it would. We'll see what he does have for five mana. Hopefully something that can block a 5-5 five, five flyer. Yeah. That spell sky definitely is not going to do so. Looks like he has a Karn. And I'm not sure what else. I think the Karn will be enough to answer the uh, Mantis, Mantis Rider, Rider next turn. Uh, it does look like Eric has a meddling mage, which could lock him out of Karn if, if he thinks that's what he's going to lose to. What do you think he'll name? He actually has a phantasmal image, so he might copy the meddling mage. Ooh, he's put him out of all his dust. That's interesting, because that also Ugin, all his dust, and Karn are pretty potent here. Ooh, for Mantis Rider. That would be six damage versus five. I don't believe that's how that works. Yeah, it's a choose it's on an enter. as enters. <laughs> yep. He was really hoping to change some target to spell sky. That, that spell sky really wants really wants something. I'm not sure Eric needed to do that. I think it would have either been better to hold it or play it on a meddling mage and name another. Yeah, name another answer. Possible answer that Robert would have. Uh, interestingly, so if he finds a way to answer... Um, he does still win through Karn. Right. <laughs> Reveals his two Karns, realizes it's not going to be enough, and packs it in. <laughs> You were right about the old art sphere. Yes, the 
the uh, Invasion Chromatic Sphere, which is a an interesting choice featuring Gerard there um, with uh, some great great flavor text. Let insight and energy. Who is that other be character your guy. there? Um, oh, maybe neither of them are Gerard. Tesh Slavak. We do have Gerard in a quote. I believe Gerard's the first one. Hmm. And the left one is Gerard, and the other one, oh, don't know. Oh, the blind seer. To Gerard, so the blind seer. Uh, the blind seer, I believe, is Urza. I I think it looks more demon-like, which I think is oh. Chavet Savak. Urza um, was dead sure. by this point, right? By invasion. I. Uh, is this Urza ever really dead? Uh, I mean, yeah, okay, that's, that's fair. I believe uh, Gerard and Urza fight each other in this block. So I'm not sure if Urza is alive or if he has a head or, you know, <laughs> where, where his body is at this point. Um, Blind Seer, I believe, is also, we're bringing it up here, in Invasion. It is an invasion. Uh, interestingly, they just didn't decide to call this Urza, and uh, but still made it a legend. Hmm. So we have Legend Blind Seer, the only one in all of Invasion. <laughs> so if the first game was indicative of, of the match, it's going to be over pretty quick. Yeah, humans is pretty disruptive. Uh, we'll see if, you know, turn three Tron is going to be good enough, though, in a lot of cases to just take out those uh, uh, early threats um, with your current activation, kind of soak up some damage, and then follow it up with a threat of your own. Especially on the play. But yeah. Last game we saw Eric kind of commit to the board, and then Robert pyroclasmed away his board, and then it didn't matter at all. He just immediately the next turn put him on a two-turn clock. Yep. Noble Hierarch once again showing its prowess, getting those exalted triggers. I love exalted as a mechanic. I think it is perfectly fair and fine. And I really wish that they would go back to it at some point. It's been since Alara, I want to say, since they've used exalted. Yeah, which is quite a while. Um, I think over 10 years. Yeah. Uh, and, and Hierarch's price is just climbing all the time. Absolutely. Got a, got a reprint. Not that long ago, but it spiked because it didn't get one recently. Yes. Then it was a uh, RPTQ uh, reward mm -hmm. promo card. Uh, I like the art on that one. I but did. It yeah, still I like the art on that one as well. The, did not influence the price at all. Still, I believe like eighty dollars. Yeah. Really expensive for, for a, a mana dork. <laughs> Yeah, there's the art for that Noble Hierarch. Looking good. Almost elf-like, um, similar to the uh, Elvish Visionary Elvish. art. Right. And not too far from the Elvish Mystic art, actually. That's true. All those green one-drop promos, Visionary being a two-drop, of course. Mm -hmm. Who wouldn't mind seeing Visionary reprinted in Core or in Ravnica or anything as well. There is a small elf theme with Morwen and and all of the other ones that go along, and the, the Lanoir Elf, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Visionary would uh, do a lot for those decks that are hoping to either combo or ramp, because being able to draw a card and be a roadblock is great. Mm -hmm. You could see it if it was printed in Core, for example. <laughs> Ooh, oh, revealing a, she's got, uh, got a beautiful this, hand this, there that hand. for Robert. Yeah. Oh, draws another sphere. Just what he wanted. If we were to see something like Visionary come back, it would be really interesting to see how many archetypes it fit into. Because you can imagine seeing that Hashtag Taker made, made me think of Godfarer's Gift and Scarab mm. God and recurring it with those and having a visionary buy back and make it a 4-4 and draw a card essentially that's that sounds something it's like something I'd be interested in yeah definitely oh there finally finds a payoff Does Robert have, Drew and Ugin he doesn't have Tron though no he has a redundant he has, power plant in his hand 
play another sphere. Has a ghost quarter. Ghost quarter, and then a Grove of the Burn Willows. Burn Willows. You know some old school Tron tech Grove of the Burn Willows here. Yeah, you don't see red green Tron too much anymore. Yeah. Although with the advent of humans and and Mardu, I think going back to the good old pyroclasm definitely has some value there. Yeah. Clock is a bit slower this game, thankfully for Robert. Mm -hmm. Eric being stuck on two and with no vial early. All right, there, there we go. go. Found the Tron land, uh, or last one he needed. Is he just a mana shy of being able to cast Ugin, though, this turn? He is, but has he land dropped? No, he's land dropping his mine. Mm -hmm. So he'll be at seven, and I don't think he has anything left in his hand except for Ugin and Nothing of value. I Nothing mean. of value. Grove of the Burn Willows. Hey, but, you know, an Ugin is really all you need. I think Tron has definitely proved that being able to perennially be stellar with just a giant colorless Planeswalkers. So. Yeah, Ugin is wonderful and it is all, all you need. Eric does have a meddling mage. Ooh, what's he got here? Ugin? He named Ugin. He named Ugin. That is, that is huge. Good choice. Yeah, because he definitely did not see Ugin off of the Freebooter um, ability. So that was a, a shot in the dark that definitely found its mark. Well, Robert did draw a World Breaker. Which is uh, always a uh, Hope Breaker. At least it is against me. That, that card is brutal to play against without something like Path to Exile to really make it go away forever. Also, with Eric only having two lands... He can cut him off all but white mana if he wants, or make his mana painful. Yeah. I don't think that's what he wants. Sure. Would you like a land? Sounds good. I guess, the city of Of course, Eric's going to clearly draw three back-to-back -back, uh, champion of the parishes and just punish him. <laughs> uh, of course. The best thing about this is uh, brick walls everything, and then... If it does happen to somehow die, which I don't know how that would be possible, he can buy it back. So, Yeah. And the Saint of Ugin trigger there is going to be able to allow him to get uh, Nulamog, which will hopefully close out the game here. And all without uh, casting a non-creature spell. Let's see, Eric did not hit a land there. He did not. He's sitting on a bunch of threes and a hostage taker. Uh, there's a Thalia's Lieutenant, Reclamation Sage, Reflector Mage. I don't see Eric getting out of this in, in any in any number of draws. Yeah. I think he needs to draw running, running land and be able to reflect your mage the Ugin. I still don't see that really happening. And Robert would also have to not exile his remaining land yeah. when he plays Ulamog. He really needed both a meddling mage and another land this turn. Robert has access to 13 mana, it looks like, this turn. Nope, looks like 12. Exiling the planes. One land, a little too a little too late, although I don't know how much help it would have been with his uh, three mana spells. That's right, he still had the ghost quarter from earlier. What is that last card in Robert's hand? It kind of looks like a Nissa's Renewal. Ooh. That's a spicy one. All right, so we got Ugin in play with two Eldrazi friends. Uh, it's a lot of colorless <laughs> uh, power and toughness. That's, that is a powerful board. There's not too much that comes back think, from this. I think I had minus two here. What yeah. about you? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Thank you for 15. Mill 20. Saw a selfless spirit in yep. Eric's milled cards. Not bad against uh, so Pyroclasm. Eric needs running path to exiles. Uh, and then to be able to answer And then to be able to answer Nugent. That seems doable <laughs> yeah. in a deck that Ooh, he, he got may a or may land. not run path to exile. I think Eric's going to let him mill him out. Yeah. I really hope Robert shows us what this card is. Ooh. A card. He's almost completed... The Tron of the spells you could possibly cast. Eric's trying to let him do the perfect, but Robert's not interested. He'll take his win. Yep. I'm really curious what that card was in Robert's hand that we didn't get to see. Looks like a Nissa's Renewal, and I actually think that the old red green Trons used to run that. Or they ran it in the board, maybe. Gain seven ramp lands. I'm not sure. The last time red green Tron was on top, I'm not even sure Nissa's Renewal was printed, but I think they ran something similar in that slot. Maybe our stream run will, will help us out and but this is renewal on the pulse of Maraza is another one of those uh, cards Pulse of Maraza, yeah, gain six, get a land or a creature back. Creature back, yeah. Instant. Search the library for three basic lands. Oh, well, I don't know if they play that many basic lands on second thought. Apparently, Robert has played that card before. Local weekend warrior here, uh, Robert, uh, always always a fan of. Jamming strange green cards and otherwise perfectly good shells. Good start for Eric with a turn one Aether Vial. Hand looks pretty Perfect powerful. Mana. He's got a Champion of the Parish and a Thalia's Lieutenant and a Thalia Gardeneth Raven. And also a Phantasmal Image and a Mantis Rider. Pretty much everything he wants I'm going to be a, a very fast clock. Mm -hmm. Robert luckily has the map, and so he's going to be able to assemble Tron quickly. Uh, he just needs to be able to answer everything when whatever his payoff is comes down. Can't see if he, Robert has a tower in hand or not, but he does have a map, so he nope. can get it. He's got two other Tron pieces, and looks like he has a Karn in hand. It looks like there may have also been an Oblivion Stone. And possibly I mean, possibly that O Stone was in all his dust. Didn't get a great look at it. It's at the front of his hand, though, so when he picks it up, we might be able to get a look again. All right. Choosing to play the Thalia, uh, playing around all his dust, and uh, well, I guess Karn 2 as well. Yeah, it does make both of them cost one more. Hmm. All the plus one, plus one counters. Thalia's Lieutenant so. really showing its chops and why it belongs in this deck. <laughs> Hitting you for 10 on turn 3 with 2 lands. Yeah. Right. 
14 power on the board and an aether vial. Yep. I think without Thalia, Robert had a pretty good chance because he can untap Tron, and then if he had an all his dust or a Karn, may mm -hmm. have actually might have actually been able to get him out of that. Yeah. Yeah, Ulamog, two Grove of the Burn Willows, a Karn, an All is Dust, an Exposition Map. And an O Stone, it looks like? I think that's an All is Dust. That's an I thought dust. it was an All O Stone at first, mm -hmm. too. Yep. Yep, Just showed him the hand. hand and got nothing. That Thalia. Oof. Oh, man. That was a fast one. That Thalia was perfect. Without that Thalia, All is Dust happens. Next turn, Karn happens. Yep. Next turn, Ulamog. That is, that is it. Actually, could have probably. Could he have done. Uh, he would have had to get another tower, I think, for an Ulamog on the next, or for Ulamog instead of Car on the next turn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but the casual turn four win out of the aggro deck is. Uh... Yep. It's got an Emrakul. Let's see. Let's see if you have the Nissa's renewal, Robert. There it is. There it is. Yep, you're right. Now I'm now I'm not positive if that if that's oh, a, that elemental looks, bond. Yeah, is that a destroy a broken bond? bond. It looks a lot like um, this is renewal. It to does. Me. It's destroy an artifact or enchantment. Play a land. Is that that one? Oh, it might be the explore for uh, shatter or disenchant rather. See, we're gonna have it pulled up. Yeah, destroy an artifact or enchantment. You can put a land on the battlefield. Two mana. I I thought this was three mana. Yeah, uh, getting another educated. Dominaria card making its uh, debut into modern. Yeah. If you saw Eric's sideboard, he had I believe brought in or was at least showing a sideboard of Shalai. Voice yeah. of reason. Great card. Absolutely. I, I think it is criminally underplayed. I would definitely agree. Even even in a deck like Elves. Yeah, um, a deck it's like not elves, an elf, and it costs four mana. But any of the various green white decks, or mm -hmm. any of the, you know, core decks, it's just having a gravity tacked on and, and making all of your other creatures have X proof, and you have X proof, means that burn has to go through it. And they mm -hmm. can no longer hand disrupt or yep. no force sacrifices or anything from Lily. 